Hello students, it's Miss Mays here, back again. And today I wanted to talk about part two of our friend, Anger. So last time we were talking about how our friend Anger doesn't travel alone, right? Our friend Anger is usually almost always accompanied by another feeling friend that we should be paying attention to. We also talked about how anger, our friend, can get kind of wild, kind of crazy, kind of out of control, and how that really doesn't feel good to be out of control with anger. So I said last time that I would give us some tips about how do we work with our friend anger? We know our friend anger is with us for life, one way or the other, at times. So how do we work with this anger so that it's safe and so that it's expressed in a way that helps us get what we want or what we need? So first thing to be aware of with how do we manage our anger, how do we control our anger, is getting to know what our friend, friend anger looks and feels like. So everybody's anger is different. Some people start to feel their temperature get hot. Some people's hands might get sweaty. Their fists might clench. Some people's voice might start getting loud. Some people can't think clearly. Some people's muscles start to get tight. So everyone's anger looks different. Some people's anger gets quiet into this themselves. It's important to know what does your friend anger look like? Because this will help you recognize when you need to pause before anger gets wild and out of control. Learning to pause when we're recognizing our friend anger popping up is really difficult and takes a lot of practice. Slowing down enough to listen to what our body is telling us, to listen to what anger is telling us, is difficult and a lifelong journey of practice. Trust and believe. But once we have been able to pause, notice anger, here are five steps to managing big emotions like anger that can be helpful to keep anger at a safe level. So one, we can remind ourselves that it's never okay to hurt others. Two, we can take three deep breaths or count slowly to 10. Three, we can use our words to say how we feel and what we wish would happen so that others around us can know what we need and what we want. We can, number four, ask for help to solve a problem so not we're not struggling in anger alone and five we can take some time to ourselves to calm down and sometimes we have to take some time to ourselves before we can start talking to people again before we can interact again we need to give anger a little time to cool off It's hard. Learning to pause, noticing the anger is hard. When something happens to me to trigger my anger, I can feel it right here in my throat. And I have to stop and take a deep breath. Learning to breathe 
in a way that will calm down big feelings also takes practice. And I will refer you to my first video on how to take deep belly breaths in order to breathe in a way that will give your paws some calm. It's tough out there, guys, but getting to know our friend Anger, getting to really acquainted, really familiar with what it looks like, what it feels like, and how to breathe, how to pause, is the main, main key to managing anger in a way that you don't make the situation worse that you get what you want that you get what you need i can't really ever think of a time where me letting my anger get out of control helped me get what i want usually anger just makes other people angry and then nobody's happy so Please, I encourage you, get to know your friend Anger. That's your friend, Anger. It's nobody else's friend. So really, the more you get to know what your friend looks like, feels like, the more you'll be able to pause and proceed with caution and calm. Thanks, guys.